Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.3. In this video, I'm going to talk about passages as text storage in Harlow 3. In Twine, passages are actually a form of storage. They hold their contents until either navigated to by the player or somehow displayed through using something like the display macro. Because of this, text content can be stored in passages and then used to make an array. This uses a combination of the passage macro to get a data map representing the passage and the words macro to convert text into an array of entries. Finally, by knowing the length of an array, a random entry can be pulled and shown to the player. And in fact, that's what we have down here. We saw a scaly, scary, scaly fox. We saw a scaly coyote. We saw a gentle coyote. We saw a gentle ocelot. These are all examples of pulling an entry, pulling a random entry from an array, and the array is made up from the text of another passage. Let's look at the code of this. We see here there's four passages in here, but they're not connected to anything. Let's start at the start passage, and I'll describe this as we go through. So we see the initial text I read, as well as down here the use of the display macro. The display macro displays the content of another passage. It's a way of including another passage without directly calling it. That is, we just include its text right here in the current context in the current passage. So we see we're displaying the passage generate animal. So let's go look at that. Generate animal is doing a lot of different things. The first of which, though, is it's collapsing the entire white space that would have been generated by all of these different macro usage here. We see opening and closing curly brackets, which means all of this will be collapsed into white space. So we see a series of things happening here. Two different things, and then two different things. The first of which is a combination of different macros, starting with the set macro, and then two other macros embedded within that same usage. So let's start with the innermost macro and we'll expand outward. To start, we see we're using the passage macro and we're then getting a data map representing the passage of whatever we ask it for. In this case, we're saying go look for the passage animals. And then we have a data map that this now represents. Then we're using the possessive apostrophe syntax to get its source. Because it's a data map, we can look at its text source by supplying a key, because it has key value pairs within that data map. So, we're getting a passage called animals, then we're getting its source. Then moving up a layer from this, this entire text is converted to an array using the words macro. The words macro takes text and breaks it up by its white space. So let's go look at animals then so we can see what we're looking at. Animals is over here. It is a series of animals, each on a new line. Because this will be divided up by white space, we could have put spaces between them or line breaks, line breaks between them. Either will work this well. So we see we have a list of animals within the animals passage. Coming back to generate animal, then we see, okay, this text is taken and is broken up into an array using the words macro. From the words macro, we're then saving it into the animals array. So we now have an array of all the text entries that are within the source text of a passage called animals. The very next thing we're doing is we're saving the length of that array. Why are we doing this? Because it helps this code make helps to make this code a little more generic. So that way we can add new entries if we want to animals, but we won't have to change our code because we're calculating and saving the length each time. And the length will be important for a later step. So these two lines right here, we're getting a passage, getting the data map representing that passage of animals, getting its source, which is its text, converting the text into an array, saving that array, and then saving that array's length. And then we're doing it again for a different passage, this time objectives. So we're taking that, we're getting its source, converting its text into an array and saving its array length. Now let's go look at that passage. That passage has another list of things. So then coming back to generate animal, within these four sets 
of macro expressions. We're taking two different passages. We're getting their text, converting their text into an array, and each time saving the length of that array. Well, why will we be saving the length of the array? Because we need it for the next set. The next thing that's happening is we're getting a random number between one and the length of that array. The reason we're doing this is because we need we want a random entry within that array. So from one, because arrays start with one in Harlow, to the total number or its length. So we're getting a random entry from one, the first whatever the first one is, to whatever its total is. And then we're saving that. And then we're using the possessive apostrophe syntax again to get a value at that array's position. So at the position right here of random, we're getting a value and we're saving it to animal. Animal is now a random entry from a text that was converted into array. So it's now a random animal. Then we're doing it again one more time in the same manner. Getting a random entry from one to its total then using that to get a value at that array's position using the possessive apostrophe syntax. So now we're getting a random entry from this array. So we have an objective and we have an animal and coming back to start we see when we run all that that it computes all of that for us and saves two different things we're looking at to and then we're displaying that. So this is a complex, complex series of macro expressions. But all of a way to point out the very first sentence of this. Entwine, passes are actually a form of storage. So as I mentioned at the very beginning of this, we can store textual content, a series of values, and then use it as our own form of storage to do calculations on it to make up different things. This is also a very basic example of doing procedural generation in Harlow. We could have multiple passages with multiple series of values. Think of them as tables in a role-playing game context. We could then roll, get a random entry from those tables, and combine them together. And through this way, create complex systems of values that, through storing those textual contents and passages, getting its text, converting the text into an arrays, and then getting a random entry within those arrays, we can create very complex systems of rules, procedurally generate, in a way, content based on the simple idea of passages actually being a form of storage and twine. And through using Harlow macros, we can access that content, access that storage, do things with it, and create dynamic content for our players through understanding the relationships between putting text into storage, getting that text out, converting the text into an array, getting a random entry in an array, and then using those values to do something. Thanks for watching.